Uh, going into the tournament, uh, our expectation was definitely just to see where we were because uh, it was really tough when we come back uh, from holidays so we put it a lot of hard work because uh, when you don't play CS for like two weeks it's hard to get back your just your game you know we didn't have the best result uh, we wanted uh, at the beginning of the season uh, in the ESL Pro League so we just came here with what we worked on and we definitely just we just really focused on ourselves and wanted to do what work in the in the preparation. Uh, regardless who we fight, we need to focus on our game, on ourselves being good and playing together, bringing our team play and raising our level of game. And that's the only thing we're focusing on. We're not really analyzing other teams, we're just trying to pick the maps that we feel comfortable against them on and playing Counter-Strike at the best we can. And that's that's our primary focus for the tournament and then if you can win the tournament that's good but you know like game after one game after the other there's no big expectation we're not the favorites of the tournament we're the underdogs and we're here to come in with no pressure and try to win it uh, coming up to the group stage uh, we played envious and immortals uh, it was two tough matches because uh, it's not really teams like we like to play um, as always, it was really tense against Envious, but we did a comeback and I was really happy about it. In that map control, can he answer aggressive at boiler of all places with an AWP? Kind of spray through the coffins actually, will deny the plant by Apex. And nobody covering XMS, maybe assuming that the Molotov would keep him at bay. Now Apex just goes on a tear. Tactics for XMS with a double UMP drag is able to put this out back in contention. Apex with MP9 gets 4k. MPK is gonna toss out the Molotov, but Happy is gonna push straight through. Gonna throw in aid of his own, and MPK is down incredibly low, but still gets the spray. This has GG written all over it. Shocks and Kenny S. Beam is trying to check each angle. No! The block of sight that Shocks is gonna one tap him down. G2 are victorious. The epic comeback has been completed, and Envious will be sick to their stomach. They let that game slip. <laughs> Uh, then after we beat uh, Immortals, uh, they went to the final of the Major of Krakow, so they, they took another level as well. We're headed into the game. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Immortals and G2 here. Grenade, not quite going to kill him. A little bit of damage there. Jumping down! And Kenny, oh my god! Not looking all that great for G2. They get the kill on one and the bomb is down and Kenny saving the round with two incredible headshots. Oh, and they line up. It's Apex in a one-on-one. -on -one. Down in the pit. And he, he's got the health for it. Apex certainly has and the bomb is down. He's out in the middle, just a huge off angle here. And Henny trying to get up on the hay cart. Apex sneaking in and it's a headshot. A bit of this incoming push and that's a headshot taking down Henny. Oh my God, Body with a smoke up and now trying to jump on top. Lucas goes down. Body gets all three kills for the quad. Steel runs in, gets the kill. He's got the triple, he's diffusing inside of the smoke, but Apex gets one and a second as well. Oh my God. We are seeing multiple people sort of trying to go for these orb kills. Oh my god! Now he knows, but he does, he can't play this game. Shocks, he has to find them, kill him right now. Otherwise, there's not going to be time. There's the one shot, and now with 10 seconds, he can just barely make it onto the site. Four seconds, and he's going to get the plant down. Lucas comes charging in. Oh, oh my god, Shocks, you've got to be kidding! Taking the kill, mid-air shot. The fact that uh, we beat them on Mirage, was a, a really good thing for us because uh, we were not sure like we would be ready on Mirage. So we changed like in-game leading on, on this map and stuff. So uh, Shoxi didn't play it since years. Apex was uh, really confident on this map, uh, the, so it was kind of normal to let him like do do his game. He loved to talk, so. So we're just like four soldier plus than like leading and it and it went perfect in practice and it went perfect at the land as well. Richard was okay to leave me leading because you as I said he was a bit lost on the map. It just he wanted to be like a soldier and listening to me and killing everyone. 
So that's why I'm coding on the map and I'm really happy that I coded pretty well during the, the game and thanks to that we, we won the game I would say. Bracket was really hard for us, the payoff was really hard for us sir. Um, we started with uh, SK Gaming, uh, which are the best team in the world right now. Even if we are pretty good against them, it wasn't an easy game at all. Starting out on the CT side, G2 Esports. Malmo, we're back. Shuts down the first side of the approach. Kenny shuts down the bomb. 13 seconds, that could be the round in itself, but he finds Taco with quickness as well. Back toward the stables, just has to find Fallen, who has an AWP. He's trying to save it at this point in time, but can't preserve himself long enough. Corner after flashing off pit, they get closer, but Kenny, he's still going to deny them. But he does set a crossfire on Box, looks for more, and they'll shut them all down. A recovery finds MBK before they can rotate to his aid. And four, three versus three, bomb to be planted, immediately sprayed through. Fallen goes to New Box, doesn't quite have the open angle to give her information early. He still gets one on the trade. Fallen's ready for it as a result. Oh! His second kill in the round, and an important one on Phelps. They'll push together. Smoke off on the low side of the arch. Oh! And Fallen goes through it. Fur matches as well. It's map and series point for SK. The flashbangs are good, but not good enough. Body and Apex doing work here on the A site, and that should be overtime guaranteed. Phelps and Fur with no kits, no utility. Company, we have company over toward B. You hear the jump? Doesn't matter. Finds Kenny anyway. Goes oh! back and nails Shocks as well. Fast as ever from Fallen, and suddenly they have the advantage and rotations are on point. They've got good damage into MBK, but it's a double op situation, and they need both kills. Mishot Fallen lets oh, them no. in, and MBK! Nox, Molotov goes into it, knows that the Molotov means they're getting desperate to hold position, and G2 completes the comeback. Unlikely it seemed at one point in time, but from 14-9 they forced overtime, and a 19-17 victory, they'll force Mirage. Unbelievable, G2. Oh is fast God. toward him. He hears it, but is he ready for it? Certainly is. Headshots oh. on both. MP9. Bait him. One pistol's there, but that's giving it up. Kenny S hits the oh. first two shots. Shot. Oh, I was gonna see the shot from Fallen. It looked like he had the lineup perfect, but shocks underneath of it. Shot back on the AK and MBK gets an entrance. G2 is rolling now. Down to Taco again. Just one to go. And G2 will find themselves in a semi-final, knocking out the world number one currently. On Inferno though, um, we, were, uh, we lost the two pistol again. We were done 14-6, I think, or 13-6. And we showed like really great resilience and players didn't uh, give up at all. What I can say about this best of three was like trust. We just trust each other. We trust Richard on Inferno for the comeback. We trust Apex for the leading on Mirage. And it was just beautiful. Everybody do, did this part and uh, Shoxi lead beautifully. And, the right time out at the right time and we we managed to come back. For me, I'm still a new in-game leader, I would say. It's been only one year and a half, so I still need a lot of experience. And I know back like even some months or whatever, uh, I was it was really hard for me to keep leading in these moments because it's like what you're doing is not working, you don't have more ideas, you have way more less confidence in yourself when you start losing, so it's become really hard to to get uh, your teammates trusting you. Um, so definitely it was hard and with the, all the experience I had now, uh, I know that if you want to come back and if you want to win it, uh, first you have to admit yourself that it's not lose. Like maybe a player can think that, but you as a team captain, you never can think something like that. It's just not possible if you're the captain. And yeah, I think it, being a game leader is the one of the hardest role because you have to think about everyone and not about yourself. And you have, and you have the responsibility to, to, to make your team winning. So that's, that's a really hard role. And it's normal that sometimes it's not 
as good as people can think because he's still a young in-game leader, but we trust him 100%. As a leader, I guess you require a lot of uh, carries, carries, and you should know how to talk to people, how to make them listen to you, and how to manage to use everyone as with his strength. I mean, use every player with his maximum, maximal potential. That's what he does good. He just, he's still starting or still learning to become the Ingham leader and he's not picking up pieces from everybody else that he used to play under, but he's trying to develop his own style as of in-game leading. And this obviously takes a lot of time and effort, but he is putting his heart into it. He's trying to learn as much as possible each and every day at practice as well and at every tournament. I think if we have been pretty consistent lately, it's not because of him, it's because of the world team, uh, because we are, we are a team, so if something doesn't work, it's because, because of all of us. So yeah, I would say that since um, after all the days, uh, Shox has been like really motivating for us. Um, he has a perfect mindset at this moment, so we are definitely really happy about it. By being a team captain, you definitely see more the whole thing as a team. You see the team play, you see the stuff, how, how uh, much is it important to know a good flash, a good smoke, and how a basic flash can make you win a round. Even if you're on A, you're thinking about the B, you're thinking about the the, the center of the map and you are trying to think about all the rotation from the teammates or even from the opponent. So yeah, you definitely have a big uh, overview and you are just not focused on yourself. And also a thing like, I don't know, it just came naturally, but by being a team captain and by being more focused on the team and uh, not on myself, like uh, I prefer to put a teammate uh, in a good position, like I will bait for you, I will flash for you, uh, let's do this and stuff, than asking him to do this for me. Like, I don't know why, but it just became natural now. I have a bunch of people who, when things don't go well, or when i trying to lose my confidence, or like, sure, am I a real captain? Am I doing the things really good? Uh, can I do better? Whatever. Uh, who ca I, ha I have this person who definitely helped me. Uh, like my girlfriend, who sometimes even after the practice or whatever, I'm talking two or three hours with her. And even if he, he doesn't, she doesn't know anything about the game, uh, it's more about the captain role uh, and like the human being. You know. So it really helps me a lot because uh, you need it if you want to control your team. Uh, also speaking a lot with my father, who is helping me a lot. And then it will be like uh, Nyak, Smith, and even Carlos, uh, sometimes I speak to him, because uh, in my opinion he's like a role model of the leadership. So I'm not studying, but have, as I said, like a lot of people who helped me to grow in my adventure as a captain and to being better each day, I hope. Going up to the semi-finals against NIP, it's a team like I always, always like to play because uh, I mean Getra is a friend and I totally respect uh, players like uh, Forrest exists so for me I even Getra of course like who are legends so it's always a pleasure to to play against them and I will never be ashamed uh, to lose against them because for me like they are legends you know so it's always like a, a big award to, to win against players like this. and Kenny's going to have some uh, green ninjas in his face very soon. Oh, oh, that is fast! From apartments and diggity. As they start to work in that direction, they line up perfectly socks. One through the other, he'll stitch them together with bullets from the M4. Hasn't needed to wrap around from diggity and therefore is already closer, which means when he jumps up, when he jumps up! As MBK evaluates how best to approach the situation, Shox goes all the way back with a single flash to try and get him inside of Banana. But as I mentioned, four players there. It's going to be a hard oh. task. What? Huge smoke comes in. Flash to Fallen. It's a retake Apex. Oh. Non-traditional Apex in this site has done very well. It's non-traditional in the fact that they pushed all the way through B. Slide. Doesn't have anywhere to go.
go, except back in front of Kenny, which limits his oh! position! What from Kenny? Careful though, because, okay, never mind. Excuse me, I thought Kenny was a lot closer. He probably could have risked going for that pick. Oh, Kenny! Oh, wow. All right, they are going to start to move the G2 players around, but not enough movement toward Kenny. As he finds one shot, a lag on Forrest. He's tagged down by Apex, and we're getting closer to map points for G2 in overtime. They've got it now, 18-17. No time, Matt. There's no time, There's no time. There's very little time. Enough time that they can spray them down. Good response from Draken, but it's too late. Bomb's on the deck. Bomb is on the deck with eight seconds. It's done. It's already over. G2 are going to the finals. 2-0 against NIP in Malmo. Defending champions. It's unable to succeed this time. We knew that Inferno was a weak map for them and because we, pra we practice against them on, on it and they're not as good as they are on the other maps. So we were really confident on our CD side and our T side against them. And at the end we won something like 16-9, so that was a pretty okay game I would say. Coming up to North and the final, it's totally another thing. Um, we kind of had uh, the world game on Inferno. Uh, we didn't have any pressure, like uh, we, I guess we were, we were better. Uh, it just took us some time to close it, but the most important is that we won. Um, and Kebel, I would say, we didn't make a really pretty T side, but we did the minimum uh, we could have done, especially without the, the pistol. If I, yeah, without the pistol. So it was okay. And then it was just a flawless uh, CT side where we just read them perfectly. We always knew what they are doing. And so. I, I, I don't want to be arrogant, but honestly, it was not the hardest game of the, tuna of the tournament, in, in my opinion. Like, yeah. games first in AP and SK were, were much harder than this. Come the nades, Body's gonna lead it. He spots Cajun jumping up. He's blinded, though. Is he gonna check for Config over to the left and Oranges? There's the check, and he gets the kill. And even Cajun B's gonna be brought down. No impact. Apex is going to try and get his way out. Hazy takes one. He's going to get completely banged by Shox, who takes two great headshots. Running in towards Arch. MBK going to be dropping Cajun from site. And Durst looking to take him down. A bit of a rotation has happened as well. And MSL with a headshot taken down one. Shox finally going to cancel him out. And a stunning headshot. Shox taking down Cajun. And NBK inside the bomb site, two man defense. There's Apex on a config on the other side of the map, but it's body and NBK. You hold it down, and now everyone's getting eliminated. North makes no progress. And it's all on Cajun B. 20 seconds in a one versus four here. T2 Esports have played an incredible tournament, and they're just one kill away, and it's gonna happen. 16 to 9 as G2 are your DreamHack Masters champions. Amazing. Everything went really smooth, like Shoxi did so many great calls. I feel like Team were a bit surprised to watching us playing like that because we played so many late rounds, like we had only six seconds to plant the bomb and many things like that. So I think teams were like a bit surprised to, play, uh, to see us playing like that, but it worked really well, we stayed pretty calm. Not that calm, I would say, but that was okay for the situation, but we can still improve it. On Cobble, I remember uh, talking to my teammates, saying like, guys, okay, we lost maybe to them online, we lost maybe to SK here, but let's play how we know and it's gonna work again. It's our best map, guys. Let's, not, let's show them that, pick it, but we're gonna wreck you on the map. And even if the beginning was pretty hard on Cobble, we lost something like 7-3. And we did a timeout and <clears throat> Smith gave us an ID, which worked pretty well. We just did that two rounds in a row and we just killed them all on the B-bomb side. So that, that helped us a lot to win the map. And then our city side, when we play well as a team, on our city side is right, one of our strongest side. And that's what happened. We lost 8-7 seven, seven the first side and then we did 9-1. I'm really happy because I think before the tournament we didn't we, we wanted to come here to see where where we were as a team contrary to the other teams because we tried to work on our consistency on our team play on everything we lacked before winning one even if nothing because when we will win like five six even in a row I will be I will say okay we did the work we just played so well 
But right now, I'm just focusing on the next event, thinking about my team and how to improve because we still have many things to improve and work. So, but I'm really happy because everyone stepped up, everyone played well, and everyone was thinking about the team, and that's always the most important in CS. I mean, in everything, but if you see someone thinking about himself before the team, it's always harder, but there, yeah, I'm proud of the team. The good thing is about Counter-Strike is that every single team is very good right now, and so you cannot, you can never rest, you can never stop. The main thing is like I'm really proud of the team because like we came back from a break, of course there was a holidays break, and uh, even like for us it doesn't mean so much to to win this tournament because every player and me myself and the staff like we know like it's just the beginning, and uh, we just like it's just the beginning of our walk and we have to win like everything. So we are ready for it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see videos like this one, from different games even, please subscribe. We love you.